Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bean and Chisme Show. I'm your host, Samantha Najera, and we are broadcasting live from San Antonio, Texas at VodPod Media. I'm Samantha, but tonight I'm not her. Tonight, um, you can call me Mari. Maricon. That's right. That is my drag name. I, as you can see, am dressed in full drag. My dreams and wishes have come true my whole life. I have wanted to dress in drag so much. And the fact that my boobies look 10 times bigger than they normally are tonight, I'm already in heaven. So tonight we are celebrating pride. Yes, it is pride month. We are celebrating that love is love. And you know what? I am a self-proclaimed and proud fag hag. That's right. I love me some gays. And I am so honored to be here with San Antonio's number one drag queen and performa, performer, Iridescent. And she's going to join me here in a bit. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. But before we get started, I want you guys to share this broadcast right now on all your friends' platforms. Tell everybody that there's a girl in San Antonio, Texas, running around, dressing like a drag queen because she loves her some drag and she loves her some gays. All right? For all you who don't like it, run for the hills. We're coming for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. But like I said, before we get started, we have to say thank you to our sponsors who love the Bean and Cheese Man Show and they make all of this happen. Tonight's sponsors are brought to you by a a Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. In this heat, you're gonna want to say this number, you guys. 210-294-9585. Alamo Paletas is San Antonio's number one paleta delivery company. And boy, are they tasty. They have all kinds of flavors and you want to book them coming up for the 4th of July. You can have them book for a cart to come to your event or you can pick them up. 4th of July events are coming up, you guys. Make sure to book them now. Visit alamopaletas.square.site or visit them under Alamo Paletas on all platforms. Lori Kesser Beauty Bee is the wax queen out of Castroville, Texas. Ladies and gents, it is so nice to be fresh and clean this summer. Trust me, you want to go see Lori. Visit Beauty Bee LC on all platforms or call 210-556-9589. The Casa Vente Weatherization Program helps income qualifying homeowners and renters like you reduce energy costs and loss with free weatherization improvements to your home. All you have to do is apply to qualify. This is free and much needed for families across San Antonio. For more information, click on the link in the comments. Tonight, sponsors are... All right, you guys, thank you again to our sponsors. But speaking of our sponsors, I want to give a shout out to Alamo Paletas. If you guys don't know who they are, they are a locally owned paleta company, but they deliver and pick up the cart. Have you ever seen a paleta cart at a party that's like the ultimate flex? Anyway, I wanted to let you guys know because of your loyalty and because I love you guys so much, I want to do some pop-up paleta surprises around town. So if you are a Bean and Cheese Met fan, loyal Bean and Cheese Met fan, and you have an office, a home, a group of people that are going to get together, I want to do a surprise delivery of paletas to, for you. So please tag Alamo Paletas in the comments and tell me why you love Bean and Cheese Met, and we will be selecting a couple groups of people to make some stops so you guys can get some love from Bean and Cheese Met and paletas. All right, you guys. Without further ado, I introduce to you drag performer, queen extraordinaire, starlet, iridescent. Good morning, my darling. How are you? Good morning, good evening, and all of the things. You look so good. Thank you. I just have to thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to interview you. We already got to hang out a little bit because you had to teach me all about the drag makeup and the hair and all the things. And it is a thing. Let it's me tell you. a little, you. you know, just a little something, a little spackle over sandpaper. This waist is just snatched. Thank you. I bought it. Oh, my God. Most of these machine washable. Not from Ross? Oh, <laughs> no, baby. Kato's. Oh. Actually, I use my Kohl's cash. Kohl's cash, not the Kohl's cash. You know the vibes. So do you like my stage name, Maricon? I love it. Thank you for giving it to me. Oh, of course. That's why I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Iridescent, where are you from? I am from Floresville, Texas. Lavernia. Floresville, Texas. Okay. I have a Lavernia address, but I grew up in Floresville. I don't claim Lavernia. But yeah, I grew up there with my family and out there on what we call the compound. Because it was like my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my aunts, and my uncles, my cousins. 
Okay. You know. So at what age did you decide, okay, I like hair and makeup. I like walking around in heels. Where did it all start for you? <laughs> when I turned 18, no, I think I was 19 and I saw a drag. No, I was 18. I was 18 in college and I saw a drag show and I said, well, I could do that. Okay. Because I was trying to avoid like feminine things in general because, you know, it's one thing to be gay. It's another thing to be gay. Um, but I thought that like, oh, well, that's not for me. And then I saw it and I was like, well, I could do that. But then I also uh, figured I went to school for theater and I was like, oh, I can play whatever role I want and be the character that I want to create. Yeah. And that's what I got into it. And then realized very quickly, no, I could not do that. <laughs> it is very hard. Oh, my gosh. It took years to be able to look this bad. Oh, mm, get it. Get it. <laughs> I can't. OK, so this is just my first experience. You guys 100 percent in full drag. We mess with the hair before we've messed with the makeup, had my makeup done before. And my neck already hurts from carrying this big ass wig. Like and this that's is just... un, and then the squeezing, and then the thing, and the like. It is a full time job right now. Like just this is little. working on all cylinders. But I love it. I feel like the most glamorous you are, and just in general, even not in drag, is the more painful you are. Okay, so the more pain, the more beauty. Yeah, and you know, you've been to events. There's nothing worse than getting ready for a wedding, and that. 45 minutes of driving from your house to the venue where you're like, is there a God? <laughs> Has he forsaken me? You know what I mean? When you're in the like Bahas and the Fincher and, 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 and you're just like, and so drag is like that except all the time. Oh, wow. But you know what? It's so worth it. I admire all of you who do drag. I saw my first drag show here in San Antonio, which I was like, this is cute because of the music and everything. But I went to Miami drag. Oh, and yeah. And I went to L.A. drag. Show, oh, yeah. And my mind was blown at the entertainment, the talent, just the fact that y'all can jump up in the air and land the fucking splits. Not me. <laughs> I don't do that. I I can spin. I was like, oh, with all spinner? this body, I'm not trying to get on the floor. Call EMS. That means I'm dying. <laughs> I use, I do a little. I can do a little um, one, too. But I was never the one to split. I figured why, if I'm going to show with a bunch of skinny little dancers, why do I need to do that? <laughs> you're, like, you're like, let them do the hard yeah, work. girl. Okay. I got insurance. I ain't trying to use it. <laughs> so I really am excited that you're here because the big part of the Bean and Cheese Met goal in our mission is to educate our gente on topics that are often taboo. You know, we already know that just being LGBTQ plus is taboo for the Latino community. Oh, yeah. San Antonio is predominantly a conservative city and you guys can argue with me about that but it's true <laughs> um and recently state legislature tried to ban drag business altogether unsuccessfully unsuccessfully and so we are still educating ourselves we are still getting to know our gay community and have pride as a celebration and i wanted to pick your brain really on what it is like to be a drag queen in san antonio what is that like? And where are we as a community? What can we do better? That's a great question. I feel like um, in San Antonio, it's weird. We have a bunch of people who are, they like to be outraged at things. Okay. Because that's how they feel. Like they the the moral majority and they feel it's a moral basis about why they're against it. Okay. But then they like drag in the sense of corneation. Or this cross dressing at that, or the, that's okay. It's the second that we take it seriously. Or you do drag, and your audience who might think that I'm a bit too much. Um, <laughs> you like the dios, and that's drag. Yeah. So, and I, I want to clarify that. So, yeah, me dressing as a man and Chuan E dressing as a man is considered a form of drag king. Is yeah. That right. Yeah, and you're playing a character. I'm playing a character. I just it. The difference is like your character is like. In skits and stuff. And you've done it. You've done events where it was meet and greets, where it became like the Pee Wee Herman, the Elvira. Yeah. That's yeah, I what drag queens the are. The yeah. Whereas like drag is like you meet Pee Wee Herman, you meet Elvira. They are these characters. That's a form of drag. Okay. You, does that make sense? It, it's character. It's costume. It's performance. It's art. Yeah. And I will say, the, let me knock on wood when I say this. Every time there's been some sort of big LGBT event and there's a huge social media outcry. It is only on social media. They say we should boycott it. It shouldn't happen in our city. It shouldn't do this. And then we come to the event after there was this huge backlash. There is one and a half protesters. Because <laughs> they just love you guys. I mean, you you gals. Well, no, but it's funny because they try and they say that they're so against us. 
Is that you and your ghost? Don't be bringing your brujerias up in here. That's who these used to belong to. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? It's very much like a, they, they're outrageous publicly online, but in reality, they don't care enough to actually do anything. I'm not inciting anything. I know. Okay. So if you want us to be violent, I'm just... No, 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 not that. But I mean, like, I don't know. It's weird to see you complain about it online and then not actually, like, be like, oh. Because they're like, oh, well, I'm going to protest. And I'm like, well, that's not true. Yeah. I very live protesting. and let live because we're not trying to we're not recruiting if that's what y'all are wondering we're not trying to find more lord knows we don't need any more drag queens we need nurses if you're thinking of doing drag go into the medical field we need those <laughs> um but i don't know it, there, i feel like there's so many misconceptions about what drag is okay there's this like fantasy of whenever i would tell people i do drag and they hadn't seen me mm -hmm. they would think of like i always think of um Oh, you hear about a drag queen and you think of this old man at a bar and a, a red fishnets, big fishnets with <laughs> Daisy Duke skirt and a tied up ugly flannel with a messed up red banged wig and just lipstick all over their face. And that's what they think of. That's creeping at the bar, trying to find the young guys. And that's not it at all. Drag is so much more and it can be so much more. It's not just like us being glamour pusses where we look stunning and incredible. That mm -hmm. is a type of drag. It's also like Club Kid where it's more conceptual or like you can be a drag monster where the, I know a lot of girls who like hammer nails through their nose and do a bunch of horror stuff like staple themselves like or, really where it's yeah no like no, real. it's not a stage they wow. actually are doing these things to themselves and it's they they try to use statistics to justify their hatred but it's like with teachers mm -hmm. they they're how many teachers are there that do things inappropriately with students, mm -hmm. the statistics of drag queens doing that are far lower, if any exist, and I don't believe there are. But I would never say never because I am, at the end of the day, a realist. Um, but trying that would be like saying, well, all drag queens are groomers and we need to get rid of the profession. That's like saying all teachers are groomers That's and we need right. to get rid of teachers. I love that example. I think we, we as a society, tend to, we like to group people when we hear, especially on social media, two or three things happening. Oh, my God. All men are... Well, if people want to do the thing of like, I'm scared of liking a drag show because what if it converts me gay? Hey. Do you think people, do people, and this is a stupid question, do people really think that? I think the real tea is they're scared of unlocking something deep within them that they didn't know. And the fact that they think that being gay is the worst thing in the world that they could be. Mm -hmm. You either are or you aren't. Okay. Like you either Let's are bisexual, you either are trans. You okay. it's not a decision, it's not a conscious choice. Um the like with trans people, trans people are not drag queens, there's a major difference. Trans people can do drag, um, and that's a whole other can of worms. But they feel a level of dysphoria where it is literally painful for like um trans men who uh, were born female at birth who transitioned into men, it is physically painful for them to wake up every day and see the that they have the breasts. The parts that they have that they Yeah, or have to go through that. It's very, it's like a level of um, psychology I can never get. I want to eventually transition, uh, but I don't feel dysphoria because I grew up fat. And I know that's stupid, but it's because I grew up fat at a very early age because I would always play the game, and I'm sure you've done this too, where I'll wear this when I get to this size. I'll oh, this gosh, win. yeah, all the and, time. I still do that. But I was like, I have the skills and I have the abilities. Why not do it now? And so I accepted everything I liked about myself and everything I didn't and realized that this is what I am for better or for worse. And so I just became accepting about what I look like. And that's not like to preach stuff because it doesn't work for everybody. It's really hard. But it was just one of those things of it's not something we can change immediately. But it's what we've got now. So for better or for worse, this is the body we have. And our mind and spirits and creativities and the things we do aren't our bodies. We're I so much that. more than that. I love that. I think also for our Latino community, I wanted to share that I applaud you for being openly gay, period. That alone, coming out is something that I'm straight, right? Yeah. And you I, are? I know. I'm disappointing. I know. Trust me. I, I love me some girls, though, because they're beautiful. But I don't have those urges. Like, no. Oh, see, you're pretty and you're so beautiful and I celebrate you. But I don't like you like that. See, and it's not a choice. It's no. Not like a and that's why I commend people who, who, who do come out. And I wanted to say to our, our followers, it's okay to accept who you are 
um, being gay isn't something that gets spilled on you because you you got like something sprayed on you or it's a curse or something like it's a beautiful thing that it is it is who you are right like love is love and something that I tell my daughter and she's little she's 10 I don't pressure her either way I just tell her you'll know me huh and you don't have to worry about that I love you either way but I understand that our community in San Antonio as Latinos we're still processing there's so much machismo so like it is a lot of machismo I'm like exceptionally Caucasian I'm like so um, you're white boy I'm white out yeah I'm super white girl but, uh, white girl it's fine you're getting close well we're gonna talk about the hey she him sham kim in a minute okay <laughs> But no, it's one of those things of like in Floresville, all my friends growing up were Hispanic because I was outcast and I don't know. Like the first time I learned to dance was at a quince. So it was seeing the uh, there were all these uh, strong Latina women that I looked up to, like my friends and my friend's mom. OK, so there would never was that machismo. But all my Latino friends who were gay, I knew about if their dad was a construction worker, they would go work with them. And that's what you did. You weren't staying home with your mom. You had to go work with your dad to like get the feminine stuff out of you we're gonna beat the gay out of you but go fix a car and now i have a bondage fetish (laughs) (laughs) now i'm into heavy h or h and h and m h and m is my kink (laughs) so quick question how did you know you were gay and when did you know you were gay like was there a crush in elementary you were like no so i was born in 94 okay and i don't did you you probably didn't because you had friends did you ever watch anime (laughs) No, uh, I knew about uh, Sailor Moon. There was I never. That was as far Moon. as I knew. But about I used to watch Digimon, and when I was little, I didn't understand what this feeling was. But I knew I wanted him to be my brother. Who was Digimon? It was like uh, they were like it's like Pokemon, but I like it better. I'm sorry if you're gonna be mad at me. Don't be mad at me for this. Be mad at me because I like Digimon more than Pokemon. Yeah. But it, um, it was just like these digital monsters in the digital world and stuff. And there were these like. Uh, teens that were like plucked from the world and I was like really really little when it happened and so I didn't know this feeling because especially then when I was little and there was no education on anything it's just you know everything's heteronormative right and was up right. to until maybe I would say 2010 2015 is when things started to be more a little more open maybe even 2008 sure. maybe yeah but um back then i didn't know this feeling i felt towards the male characters okay so i equated it to oh i want to be related to you oh okay i like does you that make sense? i want to be related i like to you, you. that i was like oh i feel this attraction or this feeling towards you but i don't know what to do it like i don't understand it got it and it's it's very weird it wasn't until i got older and um people who might be like that's strange that's weird related but, like, whenever you marry, when a man and a woman marry, mm-hmm. that's your sister-in-law and your brother-in-law. So, you know what I mean? It's this, The whole relation thing is weird. Like, I don't know. But, um, that's, but you were young and you got inklings. Of- yeah, I didn't understand. I also thought I was a girl in a boy's body. Okay. Which, surprise! <laughs> but I knew at a young age. I felt like something was weird. And then, okay. because I was, like, I'm talking, like, primary school, middle school, um... Mostly like primary and elementary. It was like, well, how do I know I'm not a girl and I'm being raised as a boy because I had never seen the other gender okay. nude. And so it was like, maybe I am that. And I just don't know it because I've only seen what I have. That's interesting. That's what I think is really weird about That's people who they're um, that they say we're grooming kids. As I'm like, no, kids are having these thoughts and feelings, but they don't understand when they're younger. As a former gay kid myself. These were the things that went through my mind. Nobody ever talked about it. My right. grandparents were very, like, straight edge. There was nothing we ever talked were about. Were they conservative? Religious? Pretty. Uh, we were born, raised Southern Baptist, but we were cool. Like, my aunt said we could swear in a church if the window was open. Four <laughs> letters if it was a door. Um, but Okay, so they weren't like, you're going to go to hell. No, they were, like, they were pretty cool. Like, when I came out, it was because I didn't come out until maybe uh, a few months into drag. Because they thought I was just going out and partying. And I don't do that. I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs at all. So were they like, why are you coming back with glitter all over? No, not even that. They thought I was just going out and partying. Okay. And clubbing and drinking and, you know, carrying on. And I had to tell them, oh, I'm gay. And so. At uh, what age was that? That was like 20. So were they like. Not shocked. No. Nope. Were they like, oh, well, we knew. Oh, no. This is not. Because I, I was raised by my grandparents. Okay. So my grandpa goes, Tyler's gay, Eva, my Christian name. And grandma goes, big shocker. And then I said I did drag and they got real quiet. But then like a month later, I won best new or best visual artist 
award by Off on a Tangent, which was an organization in San Marcos, okay. like a month later. And then it was kind of like, oh, so you're kind of like good-ish. You're great at, you're kind of talented at this. Yeah, kind, kind of. <laughs> but my grandma loves to read me. Okay. She likes to make fun of me so much. She's not going to see this. It's for the best. She, Why she, not? Because she doesn't know how to use her computer. Oh, She can play God. solitaire and then she can online shop and that's it. Oh, well, then she can figure out how to watch the beaming. She's okay. the show. You're going to have to show it. Down. Play it back. Play it back. Down. <laughs> but, um, no, she's like, um, maybe you'd win more of your competitions if you didn't have all that blue shit on your eyes. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I wonder where you get your sass. Or she's like, why are you so hippie? But she used to say wild things when I was in high school. She's like, do the kids ever make fun of you for being fat and unattractive? Or, like, do they ever say anything? And I was like, no. And she goes, huh. Oh, Wow. This is, okay, so let me just say, <laughs> drag queens, gay dudes in general know how to drag each other, literally, like, no pun intended. Okay. They are so good at knocking your ass down on the comebacks. <laughs> they they won't hurt your feelings so fast. But w- something that you and I talked about was the performance aspect of your improvs. You know how to crowd work, and that is yeah. so hard. I don't, as a comedian, I, know, I don't do crowd work. As I a love it. I tell stories. But you're like, hey, you with the red shirt on, you look like the Kool-Aid man. Or I don't know, like, what do you, what is your, I always draw my square. It's one of the, it's, <laughs> we can, we shall rebuild. But it's one of those things of like, I don't know, if I learned from my grandma that if you're stuck in a long line, you can just make conversation with the person near you. And I also learned at a young age in high school that if I make people who might not like me laugh, they think of me as a person. Okay. I know that's weird, but sure. a lot of people, there's like a dehumanization of gay people or queer people or anything you view as other because it allows them to make these hateful comments. Like even you, you've gotten hate comments before, right? Sure. Because yeah. there's a difference, with, there's a screen between y'all. They feel like she's never going to see it. Mm. She's only going to read the good ones, but it could be that one little one. Oh, no. You can't read the good comments without reading the bad ones. That's right, like, right. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It was that. And then I would host drag shows and... Gay audiences are wild, especially white, skinny gay audiences are the worst because they're so over it. They're so bored. Their friends could do, they could do better and they just, they don't think oh you're doing. But what about just general and public when you have drag oh, shows that are for the general public? That's fun. It's fun to play with people. I think it's, um, my humor is pretty dark. But I know how to temper it so I can do family friendly stuff where I don't swear and I don't make dirty jokes. Mm -hmm. But I can also do it where let's get raunchy, let's go crazy. And it's all about time and place. So I'm very big on like if I have a show that I'm hosting where there are kids, we're not going to do that. I might do some like uh, double entendre Mm -hmm. where I know that the kids aren't going to get it. But But the adults will get it. Yeah, I love that. That's a skill. That is a skill. But it's just that's just like how my family is. They're just. I, there was a lot of tragedy in my family growing up, like a lot. So the dark humor comes kind of, in. And we would make jokes about everything. Like, if mm. you, this is so messed up. And my, I, I, um, it was either, I think it was 2022, we lost my great grandparent. Okay. And it was the first funeral I went to, to a relative that wasn't sudden or tragic. It was the first one in my however many years, like 20 something years of life where it was natural causes. Okay. And so it's just stuff like that, which we, Anytime I'm at a funeral and I sit next to my Aunt Brenda, we're just cackling. You're just like, not about the situation, but because we're like, remember when she did that? And it's in the middle of the service. You know those people. (laughs) That's me. I'm the one I'm like, don't laugh, don't laugh. But it's whenever you go through so much stuff, that's all you can do. Exactly. I mean, life is short and all we can do is make fun of all these things. And it's not a fun answer, but it's the true one. Yeah. But I, you know, like I said, I think you're very talented in your performing and your improv, that's that's a skill. Hosting in general is hard to do. Comedy is hard to do. And you can do all the Thank things. Thank you. And I've tried way. to teach my drag daughters that there is something to be said for hosts who aren't funny, but they are good facilitators. So they are good at making sure the show goes on. If you see a comedic moment, you are able to enhance it and call it out. But you're not... Because I, right. I tell them... And this is a lesson for anybody who wants to get into entertainment. There is nothing worse than a host who isn't funny, who is trying to be. Oh, no. If that ever happens to me, you guys tell me. You're actually funny, though. How do you know? Are you lying to me? No. But also, you can read the crowd. You know immediately if you're bombing. And you change it up. 
Whereas some people True. don't have that self awareness. They're like, True. No, I can see in the faces right away. Yeah. They get quiet. Oh, and whenever that happens, because that's happened to me a lot, I say, Well, I like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a good way to come back. Um, so back to the being gay thing, because, you know. <laughs> Hi, gay people. <laughs> What do you tell people who say you're going to burn and rot in hell well, for being the way that you are? I mean, probably, but not for this. <laughs> I like bacon. That's a sin. Uh, sometimes I wear fur <laughs> trim stuff. There's a bunch of things that like are against the biblical laws that we're breaking every day that I'm just like, hey, that is fine. It's fine. If it's it is going to be what it's going to be. But if the conservative Christians are the ones in heaven, I don't think I want to be up there with them for eternity. Because they seem, like, awful. Like, always judging you, always thinking you mean, be better. Right. And and uh, obviously, the, the Christian religion is about love. Loving yourself, like, loving others as you love yourself. So, I was accepting always, other. I was more spiritual about stuff. I always thought that it's it's parables to make you a better person and try and do better for yourself. But everyone focuses on the policing stuff. But it's not your job to police other people. That's what God was for. That's why it was written that way. Why are you pretending to be God and policing other people? Preach! We're going to church today, y'all. We're going to church today. No, I 100% agree. And I think that we as a society are trying to become more accepting. And that's why I like having shows like this. Is that we aren't here to judge. We are here to accept. And if you are coming out this week or this month for pride month or you're coming out whenever you're thinking about it we just want to let you know that you're loved either way we know that you are a human we all bleed the same well can i add something yeah go for that i feel like there's the misconception that coming out is the end all be all okay so talk to me about that if you are in a situation where your family's not going to accept you you're going to be kicked out you're going to face homelessness um you are going to be put in a very uncomfortable situation it's coming out may not be the answer okay because sometimes it can be more dangerous for um queer individuals to come out like okay. that and that's that's unfortunate and a lot of people don't like saying that but that is that's it the is true it's the truth So, what do you recommend do as much as you can be as just have patience have confidence in yourself and believe that it will get better and hope that it will get better always try and look at the positive um try and find resources that will okay. be able to help you in case you do get kicked out. There's a bunch of nonprofits in San Antonio that are able to assist with that, especially with like teenage homelessness because the gay okay. people are like, I'm not going to have a gay son, get out. And they kick them out I'm and then not. the teens are on the street. Mm-hmm. But then they're like, don't you groom my child. I'm like, well, you aren't going to take care of them. So we have to take care of our own. Um, but it, it's just one of those things of I feel like everyone thinks once you come out, life is immediately better. And for a lot, some people... That's just not the case, especially for minors. There are so many kids in um, vehemently conservative households that it could put them in danger because of either corporal punishment, abuse, um, isolating them from their friends, disconnecting them from the world. It It's pretty scary. That is scary. And that makes me sad because as a straight person, we take for granted that I've lived my life liking who I've liked, loving who I love my parents accepting me for who I am without having an issue. But a lot of people don't have that luxury. Well, and it's, I, I think it's so funny to see comments of, why do they need a whole month? What do they need to be proud for? What about the veterans? You have Veterans Day and you have Veterans Appreciation Month and a bunch of different or, um Well, all year long things. we celebrate our veterans. All well, year no, long, yeah. yeah. Like, I, <laughs> but it's also, it's not even just that. Anytime they point out a marginalized group, I'm like, there are holidays in place for it. Pride was not a parade at the beginning. Pride was a um a march it was defiance it was a protest we celebrated as fun like yes but originally it was a protest that we marched in the street and i think people forget that um but i don't know it's it's so funny but it's comments like that that are why we need it exactly like i I am so so thankful for this because my whole mantra for drag in general was be who you needed when you were younger (gasps) and i am exactly who i wanted to be when i was younger I used to draw the shape of this woman who was shaped I like this one. You know what I mean? But even you, like, sense. little Sam would l- love what you're doing. I would. Oh, my gosh. She would be in heaven right now, little Sam, because I loved my number one thing growing up is I wanted to be an actress and a starlet. And I like Lucille Ball. And I love, Lu- or not I love Lucy, um, Bewitched. Love and that. And all of the, like, I love Jeannie. We talked about Jeannie was like So anything glamour. And, you know, I didn't grow up a girly girl. 
I grew up like a plain Jane. So, and not, I wasn't even like a sporty girl either. I wasn't a very, I was in some sports, but I always looked up to womanly women. And so when I saw drag queens perform, I was like, oh my God, that is the baddest bitch I've ever seen. The hips alone, Ooh. the nalgas, the chichet, and I still want to get my boobs done. This only makes me want to get my boobs done even more than saying. But isn't it wild what a little bit of cotton can do? Oh, don't be telling everybody the secret. <laughs> hey, it's gone. I got foam rubber. Okay, okay you guys, I have to show you. Temper One, two. No, now they're on the floor. Oh, my God. Three. The napkin. Four. There's more. Hold on. Hold on. And y'all aren't going to see nothing of mine because I grew these myself. <laughs> Are your own chichet? A little bit of, I got stung by a bee. Okay, wait, are those real chichas or like what's happening under there? Because I didn't see you get dressed. It depends on whatever he pays me to say. <laughs> after the show. No, um, no, they're big foam pads. You can actually see them in our TikTok that we found. Oh, that's, okay, yes. Yeah, so it's uh, it's in the shape. Um, A lot of these, <laughs> well, that's what's cool about, I, I, these were, I don't know exactly what they were designed for. I think a lot of uh, the stuff that we use for padding is originally designed for mannequins. Like whenever you're doing a dress form, so oh, so they look you, perfect. You can add it on shape. Well, no, so you can model onto it and sew onto it for the girls that are actually shaped like. <laughs> I'm playing with my so stuffing. Much. By the way, you guys, this is these are socks. Okay, these are Hanes white socks. And look how clean they are, freshly washed. Clean Hanes that make my boobies look bigger. So if you guys see me walking around San Antonio, Texas with big old boobies, it's these. Well, there's another trick you can do. You know how there's those bras. You can get where there's a, like a, a, it's the front layer, the padding, and then another layer. Okay. You can add a zipper and fill them with rice. <gasps> and it, it's heavy, but they bounce and jiggle like real. But when you get hot and sweaty, it, you get hungry. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm always hungry anyway. And then the whole Faha thing, when you were, when you and I were, you were training me, I was a dragon training. You were showing me like how you Faha. Oh, thank you. Amy or whoever it is at Left Shot the Tea. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, fahai. Yeah, like, mine's a corset. Mine's a full steel bone corset. I can't believe the amount of work and pain. Like you said, beauty is pain that you put into looking this fabulous. And I just commend you for that too because I'm just like, a lot of work. It's a, it's, it's a losing battle. Glamour is a losing battle. Okay. Because we are only aging. We are only getting older. Gravity. I'm here to be just that. But I'm here to be Debbie Downer. No, but like, and so at one point in my life, I will not be able to do this anymore because drag hurts just in general. So until, while I still got it, let's go. Right. Plus like all the pictures and videos last forever. And I'm so, that's the good thing about the digital age we live in. Okay. Is because think of all of the fun memories that your, the, and your family has had. Oh, gosh, they just that we don't about. see it. But yeah. now we can be like, look, we went to the river this one time and you can look at us skinny we were our look oh i was fat and it's just i think it's great and just don't compare yourself to the old stuff because oh gosh i get all sad different people i get all depressed in my old hood rat days i'm like oh she was flaquita well let's go outside and fight somewhere right now but now i'm in a different hood rat phase of my life and i'm okay with that okay all right <laughs> i heard you laugh okay so really quick let's talk about you and your career so can i tell you can i tell everybody your real name or no yeah, go. she likes to yell it because my, my I mom do like to yell it because it was easy to yell. Tyler Colton Bigler. That's literally why. How Tyler Colton Bigler Jiggle over right here. If you didn't know that I was Caucasian, now you too. We got a white boy here, you guys. Wow. A white boy from Floresville, Floresville, Texas. But I see. Can you imagine Tyler Colton's grandma <laughs> being like Tyler? I can't believe you're looking like that. She grew, she's from Natalia. So one day she was like, why don't you talk like a hick like us? And I was like, because I don't want to. Does your grandma legit have an accent like yeah, that? Yeah, it's not rowdy. But it's just, but a little she bunch of twang? It. Yeah, when she says stuff, you can hear it. Yo. She's wild. Tyler, get those heels off. Those aren't for girls. Well, those yeah, are for boys. And my, when, my cousin used to babysit her, <laughs> when my cousin used to babysit me, she um, knew I was going to be, because I could outrun her and my cousin's princess heels. No, on, no. Sand. <laughs> on sand. Wow. Yeah. Not like so much home. anymore. If you book me in a place with sand, um, uh, don't. I'll put... <laughs> don't do it. So, Tyler is <laughs> Tyler era. If era. you call me Tyler out, I'll fight you. I can only do if this because I'm out of Yeah, she's a goddess. Oh, thank you so much. But, no. Oh, uh, you're living up to your name. Body Guan is my name. But no, it's one of those things that if I don't know you like that, don't call me that. Because I, um, so about the name real quick. Sorry. Um, oh, you're fine. 
if you know me in drag and you've known me forever and they just call me Ira even out of yeah drag, but it's great for me to separate the personalities because if you call me Tyler I, I'm like I know you from school I know you from work I know you from church I know you from somewhere that's not the strip and if you call me Ira I'm like okay cool we've met in drag that's how you know me you know what I mean it's got really it good to like <laughs> so okay so Ira yeah you are now a show host and stop how do you do that i don't know can you do the oh no you can't you can't do it right now what your face will shatter like the end of death becomes her oh gotcha so how so right now you're a performer but you have your own show so I, tell us about your show so i got mike wazowski like two years ago because i won third best podcast in san antonio <laughs> for good morning darling but because it didn't have my name in it nobody knows that it's me but hi and so then i took a little bit of break because i started it i think in 2021 2022 um when i was doing live shows but i wasn't working as much so i had time to go film and like take a little more time with it and then like the year after i just got very busy because okay. live shows are a lot and that's like sewing new out i make most of my outfits i made this dress hunts and aberqueer made these gloves wow um and Jenny Talia made the hair. And Richard Van Stone made the earrings. Gotta get the gig. And uh, Joey Shout out. made that wig. Shout out. Shout out. Aggie. But, and Diablo Banks did her makeup. Diablo. Shout out to Diablo who did my makeup. She's the best. Queen underscore Diablo uh, on Instagram. But it's one of those things of like getting ready for shows is a lot of work. I and can't. Yeah. I don't like Oops, doing the same songs. I really don't like wearing the same outfits a lot. Mm -hmm. Only because... If I'm not going to be the best dancer, I might not be the most prettiest. I'm definitely not the most thin. <laughs> but I know. On Who's some shows, I... Like, Thank you. You have a cataract. Um, but what is it? <laughs> no. So I um, I can out-costume people. Some of them. If they're, we're drag legends. It's different. But um, So that's why I put a lot of work into it. I couldn't... I didn't have the time to edit the videos and post them regularly. Okay. And so now... All this to say, I have a new show or a live show at Let's Be Honest on Thursdays, not tomorrow because I'm going to be in the Valley, um, at 9.30 p.m. on Thursdays at Ikechula the Bar. Or no, 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 no. Ikechula's on Fridays. At Let's Be Honest downtown on the Strip. Okay. Let's Be Honest on the Strip yeah, and Ikechula. On Thursdays. Okay. And then I get you on Fridays. That's the viewing party for Drag Race. Sorry. I have untreated ADHD if you couldn't guess. It's okay. I'm here to wrangle your ass. Thank you. Get to it. And it's a big one. <laughs> but um, no, so our show, the, it's a live version of the podcast called Good Morning Darlings Live. And the inspiration was because I would post my episodes when the first series went out. And uh, some of the newer girls would be like, oh, yeah, we watch your show together as friends. And I was thinking, what a polite lie. Aww. What a nice lie. And Stop then, it. You know, then they snapped and it was like six of them at the apartment watching an episode. I was like, y'all like this? And so it was always in my mind because I always wanted to, my dream is to do like San Antonio Living or like a daytime show on TV. Okay. Where it's actually, like it is serious, like interviewing, we have guests and stuff like that. I just happen to be in drag and that's like a dream. But until then I was like, I would love to do a late night talk show. And thank goodness for Asia Rosé and Gina Woods for helping arrange it. Um, and so, yeah, we started doing it. So it's my podcast live. We film it on Thursdays and I post it on Tuesdays. Okay. Um, my most recent episode that came out uh, yesterday was with uh, the burlesque superstar Jasper St. James. He's incredible with the Pinkley Pops. Um, Jasper St. James. He's amazing. I love him so much. What do you call them? Pasty Pops? The Pasty Pops. They're a burlesque troupe. The do you know what it is to pop a pasty? What does that mean? When it pops off. But why do you pop it off? No, you don't. <laughs> you're not supposed to. You're not to. supposed to, but it but happens. Sometimes when you perform, you oh, pop a pasty. Okay, got it. Out. Got it. And, yeah. Oh, I'm all, I have all the questions. Yeah. But it's because I, <laughs> Miss Mama, I work. My, uh, I can't have any business cards because it would be ridiculous because I DJ, I do comedy, <laughs> I do drag. You're a performer. I do, I yeah. But I, if, you, well, if you've got a dollar, I've got a talent. Um. <laughs> my one Aggie, just throw quarters uh make a hail what's now, the cash out for everybody right now oh if you don't like anything that i've said or done or just existing it's at the bubble babe 69 um and the? the bubble babe 69 and you can send me any hate comments you want but only donations of 20 dollars i will take seriously otherwise you're just messing with me <laughs> but that's the most direct way for me to like 
repent for my sins. Oh, oh my God. gosh. Quick question. Yeah. What is your biggest achievement? Oh, so there is a um, LGBT nudist camp in... Um, LGBT nudist camp? Yeah, okay. exactly as fun as it sounds. In Stockdale, Texas. So called... people walk around with their boobies and their nalgas hanging out? Yeah. And their wee-wee and their other thing? It's beautiful. The vagine? The vagine. And they just, they live free. Yeah, it's fun. Like, you can swim, you, the hot tub, there's a bunch of, like, you can do axe throwing. All right, you guys, if you see me in, um, where'd you call it, Texas? Oh, it's Cat Stockdale. It's called Camp Nacti. If you, if you see me at Com- Camp Nacti, mind your business. But they named their theater after me. What? Yeah, it okay. was one of the greatest honors of my life. It's And I say it so nonchalantly because I don't show emotions well. I, I hate surprises because I know I'm not going to react how people want me to react. Okay. Because I, I get psyched out. And it is literally the greatest honor of my life. And I always say it was not my idea. But um, right as COVID was ending and things were opening up, I got invited to do a pool party. Okay. And I didn't want to do it. And everybody was <laughs> naked? No, 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 no. I, it, everyone was clothed. It was just the, in someone's backyard. Okay. Before and the, Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to do it because I was in McAllen that Friday. And then I came back to San Antonio in drag, hosted at 2 p.m., then got out of drag and got back in to host at 5 p.m., then did the parade and then did a night show. And so the next day was supposed to be Sunday at like 6. And I was like, I just don't want to do this. I was like, fine, I'll do it, but I'm not going to pad or do anything. Like, where are my hips? You're just going to go. And I went, and they were really nice. Everyone was so attractive, so I felt kind of like a <laughs> the sexiest toe you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> did my thing. They loved it. I did, like, I think I was only supposed to do one number, and I ended up doing three. And so at the last one, I said, hey, can I jump in your pool? Because I had, like, a drag bucket list of things that I want to do. And okay. that was, like, on the top. Jump in a pool and yeah. jump in drag. And so I did. And that stuck with them. So that apparently that was their last pool party because they had it, it was packed. It was so there were so many people. So that's what inspired them to start the camp is to have these pool parties. But now it's a whole place where people can camp and have fun. And it's so nice. And my thoughts of everyone being attractive and what was automatically going to be like <laughs> um, uh, was misguided because they are so lovely and so sweet. Wow. And even when I wear less than this. Nobody, there's no, I don't feel self-conscious. I don't feel weird. I don't feel strange. And, you know, even though we go through, like, I'm pretty secure in who I am, sometimes we have those moments. Yeah, and of course. And they've never made me feel less than. They always make me feel special. And it, it was I stunning. love that. And when when they first opened, it was a concrete slab. They said, this is going to be your theater. And I said, no, 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 it's going to be a theater for me to perform at. And then when they made it and it got my name on it. It was just like a what? What is it called? Uh, Camp Nacti. It's the Iridescent Theater. The Iridescent Theater at Camp Nacti. Yeah. Wow. So you have your own stage to perform at. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all of your accomplishments. Thank you. On your podcast, your show, your performances. Thank you. I have a quick question because we're going to go to a break. What can we do better as a community and as a society in San Antonio, as a Hispanic culture? To support you all, drag and gay people in general, but the drag community specifically, what can we do better? I think, think of drag queens as small businesses. So it's, if you've got a family member, everybody's two degrees. It's like Kevin Bacon. We're all close to the drag queen. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to share a flyer if you can't go. Um, follow them on social media. It helps get the numbers up and it helps them with the algorithm and it helps them monetize their um, uh, content. It's just, it's great to support. It don't, if you see somebody being obnoxiously hateful, try and educate them. We have, um, you. everybody has homophobic relatives, and the best way that we can combat that is by educating them. So when they say drag queens are creepy groomers trying to get kids, it doesn't take any energy to say that's not true. Okay. And try to help educate your family members who might not understand. So th- I feel like the best thing that we can do as a community to um just help out especially our straight allies is educate those who are willfully spreading misinformation that they might be ignorant ignorance not an ugly word it just means that you don't don't know something now and there's nothing wrong with that we're all ignorant about some things but i feel like everything's so politicized and that it's like a we're, we're calling you awful people no you just don't know something and that's completely fine but it doesn't take it doesn't hurt you to learn anything and it doesn't have to be your cup of tea but just know that we are people, we are real people, we're doing these things and just help 
because it's not just for us. It's not just for the Glamazons on stage. This is going to help your little cousin who's scared to come out because uh, his uncle said a bunch of homophobic things. Or no the, seas, joto. Or like <laughs> the aunts at the wedding, you know, be like, oh, the gay did her hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I appreciate that. And thank you so much for coming and sharing your story, but also helping us be a better people. That's what I want for being in Chisme is like, I bring up taboo to- topics and I love to do pendejadas and be stupid. But I'm like, no, let's be real and let's help each other out and let's make a difference. Let's move our gente forward. Move our community forward, please. Can I give a shout out? It's quick? 2024. Go for it. So major shout out to there. And it's a Latin owned business. Okay. Uh, 360 Clean Entertainment, Rick and Joseph. I love them so much. I work with them on Fridays at the viewing party at Icachula. But they own a, com- a, a drag business called 360 Clean Entertainment. And they were part of the lawsuit that sued the state of Texas about wh- that the drag ban was unconstitutional. And they won. And you and I talked about this very briefly. What was the argument of them winning? It, part of it was that it infringed on small business rights because they started this business for drag and it would be like opening a baleta stand and then saying, well, if you're going to sell any frozen treat outside, um, that's suddenly illegal. Right. It's like, but I just put all this money in this business. And I t- pay taxes that help support our exactly. city. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a business. And that's it's a business. I think that's the big thing that was employment really is realizing that it is a business and there is money to be made and that money has been invested. And I'm sure there was a bunch of other arguments, but I know that um, the judge was really conservative and that he said it was such a compelling argument. They did all of the work, so they know wow. more than I do, but okay. I wanted to shout them out because every entertainer, even yourself, you dressing up as the Theo would have been illegal. Wow. If you would have gone to a meet and greet around kids, you would have been a felon. Wow, that's crazy. Just doing me. that, even just being dressed up, not even as doing a male. Anything. Wow. Yeah. So we all, anyone who does any sort of gender play owes them a great deal of thanks. So Rick and Joseph, I know I say it all the time. I love you so much. Thank you so much for what you did for our community. Rick and Joseph from Ike at Chula. From three, and 360 Queen 360 Entertainment. 360 Queen Entertainment. Yeah, you can catch us this Friday at 6.30 for our RuPaul's Drag Race viewing party. And then from... Um, all the way from RuPaul's Drag Race, we have Alexis Mateo. She was just announced on the new Canada versus the World. She will be at Tomatillos. His family owns Tomatillos on 1604. Uh, we're place. doing the Diva Dinner, I believe it's at 8.30. What time? When? Uh, Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Okay, I'll be in that show. Okay. And then Sunday, they're doing the brunch. I'm not sure where, but Google it. But they'll also be in the Pride Parade Saturday. Nice. Oh, I know. There's a lot going on, you guys. Pride Week is super crazy for a lot of people. So really quickly, we're going to take a break because, you guys, I forgot to tell you. There's been really crazy news. If you haven't heard, at Woodlawn Lake, I discovered a murderer, a killer. And I want you guys to hear about this because it is so important. And he's still on the loose. Play it. Reporting live here for Hood Rat News, my name is Samantha Najera, and we are live here at Woodlawn Lake in San Antonio, Texas. If you can see behind me, the waters of Woodlawn Lake have been reportedly infested with sharks. You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. Woodlawn Lake has been reported to have sharks in the water. Ducks are disappearing left and right. The ducks are panicking right now. And we spoke to one particular duck who has a primo who is missing. What can you tell us about what you saw? Well, Sam, to be completely honest, I saw my life flash before my eyes. Do you think the sharks have gotten to your cousins and all of your family members in Woodlawn Lake? I mean, it all happened so fast, I couldn't really honestly tell you. I didn't have time to turn around. I mean, I did see Grandma go down pretty hard. I mean, I had to push her out the way because she was going too slow. All right, folks, there you have it. Sharks have come to Woodlawn Lake. All of the ducks are disappearing. This is a state of emergency. Reporting live for Beating Chief Man's Herd Rat News, I'm Samantha Nahira. All right, you guys. As you heard and saw, a shark killed hundreds of thousands of innocent ducks at Woodlawn Lake here in San Antonio, Texas. And we here at Herd Rat News were able to track him down. You heard it right. I tracked down Jocelyn. He was actually in jail. He's out on parole. And we gave him the opportunity to hear his side of the story of why he decided to kill the grandma of Howard the Duck. 
Mr. Shark, we are here to get to the bottom of the truth, and we have you here to share your side of the story. So tell us, why did you do it? Do what? Have breakfast? I feel a little discriminated against. You're singling me out, just like these ducks did. Listen, I was hungry, I had breakfast, and duck was on the menu that day. And besides, these ducks were awful. Every single day they would make fun of me. Nobody wants to get that side of the story. Just because you were bullied or felt left out doesn't justify the horrific murder that you did to thousands of ducks in the lake. What do you have to say for yourself? Thousands of ducks in the lake? Now you're getting personal. It sounds like you're calling me fat. Well, I have to say it for myself. I could have passed on a few ducks, but I didn't. I'm getting help, okay? I'm on Ozempic. What do you have to say to the families who lost loved ones? I mean, you even killed Howard's grandmother right in front of his face. What do you have to say to Howard? You had to use the K word? First of all, he was long gone. He's the one that actually pushed her out of the way, okay? So he was not there. It's his word versus my word, but he wasn't there. Howard's a coward, by the way. Who leaves his grandmother? You know, you are a multi-platinum Grammy award-winning artist for your song, Baby Shark. And now I feel like you have ruined the song. I mean, I am a big fan, not gonna lie. Me and my daughter love Baby Shark. Baby Shark, And now we only see you as a murderer. What do you have to say about that? Listen, I didn't murder anybody, okay? I had breakfast. I was hungry. What do you think you're eating in the mornings? Baby chickens. You're in there eating eggs. So, you know, you say you're a fan of mine, look, okay? Because it sounds like I'm going to jail, okay? Commissary isn't cheap, so maybe you can send me some commissary money. Put some things on my books. Those spreads ain't cheap. We'll keep in touch. I'll make sure to give you a little autograph for you and your daughter. Maybe be my little baby shark from the pen. Maybe you wait for me. Take you out for a nice little dinner when I get out. So, well, there you have it. Straight from the shark's mouth, baby shark will never be the same. Signing off for Hood Rat News, I'm Sam. Mr. Shark. All right, you heard it yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Johnson, the killer shark who is out on parole. Now, I want to hear from you as an audience. Do you think that Johnson really was just hungry? Do you feel like he is being discriminated against because of his crazy ass teeth and his looks? What do you think? I personally say hashtag justice for Howard. Please put hashtag justice for Howard or hashtag team Jocelyn if you think that Jocelyn is innocent. We will find out. He is going to court soon and we will find out whether or not he will be officially sentenced and what that sentence looks like. All right, you guys, back to the show here. I just want to give a shout out again to Alamo Paletas and this one's melting right here on my hands. This one's called Pickle Pepino and we love Paletas. I'm obsessed with paletas. I want to start a line of hood wrap paletas. Anyway, we're going to do surprise pop-ups and deliver paletas to some of our fans. So if you weren't here at the beginning of the show, tag Alamo Paletas, and we're going to go do surprise visits sometime very soon. And we're going to pop up and hand out paletas just like Willy Wonka style. All right. Um, and I wanted to wrap up the show. But of course, before we wrap up the show, is there anything else you'd like to say? Because, you know, we're going to drag it out here at the end. I have to give out a shout out to our chingon of the week first. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay. Wow. Of course. No, thank you so much for taking the time to show me all the ways. Absolutely. I, I think that there's the misconception that what we do is so easy and so simple. And so just like showing up at low effort. And I really, I'm thankful for you for letting us, because not to break the fourth world, we met before this. And I think that just so that way you could see what it takes yeah. and how much goes into it. Because I feel like a lot of people think, of like, oh, it's easy. Just a little bit of makeup, a little bit of hair. And I'm like, <laughs> but not really. Okay. No, I have mad respect for you and the entire community of how you guys do this. I don't know. Because this is my head hurts. I have a headache. Huggy. <laughs> but I also don't want to take any of this off. Look at this. Oh. Look at these. You're going to see her next week. It's just the makeup just running. But hi, everyone. It's giving Mari, Mari con. Okay. Okay. You can catch her at the Alamo market <laughs> over on the south side. At the flea market. Okay. So anyway, really quickly, quick shout out to our chingona of the week. I'm so excited about this chingona. It is Judge Melanie Lita of Bear County Court 7, the honorable judge, Me Melanie Lita. Love, love, love her. She was born here in San Antonio. Um, first born citizen in her family, Melanie understood both the hardships of a migrant life as well as the pressures of first-generation citizenship. At the young age of 16, she began her college education and attended San Antonio College, and it is here where she discovered the beauty and empower 
empowerment of education. She went to University of Houston after that, and after exploring an array of majors, she graduated with her bachelor's in art history and religious studies. Love it. Shortly before graduating, she was accepted into the University of Denver School of Theology's graduate program for master's degree in religious studies. And we got us an educated Latina chingo on here. Oh, and she witnessed firsthand the importance of legal, legal advocation. Melanie had found her calling. Upon graduation, she packed her bags, moved back to San Antonio, and took the LSATs. She was accepted into St. Mary's School of Law, graduated in 2015. While attending law school, she earned her second master's degree in international relations with a focus on conflict resolution. She graduated from her second master's program in the top 5% of her class. Over the course of her career, Melanie has been revered for her commitment to human rights and social justice, both domestically and internationally. From 2014 to 2017, she worked with a nonprofit, uh, I can't say it, out of Syria with refugee children. And in 2015, she won the Right Frank Feminist Award and the Justice Alma Lopez Women in Law Leadership Award. Now she is a judge. Before becoming a judge, she served as Barrick County Court appointed attorney and an immigration attorney of her own firm, where 40% of her cases were reserved for indigenous respondents, and she did a lot of pro bono work. She won her election in November 2022 and took the bench January of 2023. And since becoming county court judge in Court 7, she has reduced the backlog, brought back families, and uh, brought back all family violence cases to County Court 7 and 13, and started a new non-citizen docket focusing on individuals who face immigration consequences during criminal proceedings. And we could go on and on and on about this girl. And this is why she's this week, Chain One of the Week. We love you, Melanie. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, I'm very proud of you. And I'm so excited to be walking with Melanie Leah and her team in this Saturday's Pride Parade. So come say hello to me, to Melanie. And Pride is this weekend, you guys, in San Antonio. So there is the big Pride uh, Festival on Saturday and Saturday night, the Pride uh, Parade. So go to the website. I think it's pridesa.org. And we're going to put the comment in the links with all. And, of course, make sure to add your where you're going to be at. Because you're going to be in the parade, too, right? Yeah, I'm going to be with the Captain Axe float. Okay, so you have your own float. Wait till you see the body. <sighs> lucky well we're all going to be at the pride parade having a great time on saturday night thank you so much so we're going to go ahead and end the show oh can i add one thing real quick go so uh i don't know if y'all watch tv but uh, there's an election year so please make sure you are registered to vote you have to do your due diligence and make sure your voices count i know some people feel disenfranchised and that the system doesn't work but it's the only system that we have so we have to use our voice you cannot complain about the results of an election if you do not use your voice to put it into there. But yes, please make sure you're registered to vote. You only have to register once. You can check online for your closest polling places. And if you know anybody who is infirmed or can't, you can always do a mail-in ballot. Okay, era death in for president. Let's go. Let's go get out and vote, of course, and make, register to vote. All right, so show me your ways. We're going to do some drag poses, and I want you to show me how to do it, and we're going to end the show right now. Right, getting. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh body. Just the body. You said that too. Loud. Hold on, let me add my chichas back again. Mm. Oh, oh. I look like Godzilla. Oh, I, y'all, I am in love with the boot. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna stop wearing this. What am I? There's the dream girls that. We're your dream. What else? And then the. Oh, I'm not gonna raise my arms because I'm a lady. Okay. I need my fallout. Uh, my favorite pose so- is the. Am I doing it right? You act like act like you just farted. Boo the face. Every drag queen does this photo shoot. But my tooth hurt. My tooth hurt. Boo. Boo. My tooth hurt. The slammer. And then just body. Serve the body. Serving. Serving queen. Serving. I kind of do that on the daily where I do my pics like this. But this is so much more. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Okay, one more. Give me one more. Just start wrapping up. Mwah. Wait. Goodness, you look gorgeous. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining us. Please watch our next episode, July 10th. We'll see you guys next time. Share it. Share it. Share it. Bye. 
Damn.